is so beautiful. How will I ever top this? My beautiful, my pride and joy, the best thing I've ever done in my life, besides getting married, of course. How will I ever top it? Give me the answers, Neil Gaiman. That's it. The coolest character in God of War Ragnarok. That's what we'll do. Not Freya. Not Kratos. No one except Sigrun. Hello. So, this last weekend, I went and competed in my very first cosplay contest. Wow. You no, know, amazing. Fantastic. I was Pura from Tears of the Kingdom, and I got about a bazillion pictures with people, and I even placed third in the novice category for the Fanex competition. I beat Iron Man, you guys. It was pretty cool. Um, I was totally settled with the idea that I was definitely not going to win anything after seeing all of the other competitors, but by some stroke of luck, I was 20 points away from having a perfect score out of 120 points. So I had like perfect 100. Um, and yeah, it was the most surreal weekend of my life. The in-person judging was the scariest single minute of my life. Uh, I don't even remember anything that I said during it, uh, but they ended up keeping my project book, which was super cool, and all of that stuff. But anyway, that's not why you're here. It's not why I'm here either, but I gotta get the plug in, okay? Because now I'm a bona fide cosplayer. He's bona fide! Um, so... Clearly, I need to top Kira, and I really would like to get first place in the intermediate category next year. So, what we're going to do for that is, as you learn from that cringe of an intro, is Sigrid! The Valkyrie Queen, or former Valkyrie Queen, because Freya came back in uh, Ragnarok and all of that stuff. And we're doing the version where she's been freed and all of that, so she has the more natural wings going on. So, for this video, we're going to go over all of the planning that goes into making a cosplay like this. Um... And yeah, we're going to just figure out how we're going to make all of these individual parts. So, if you do enjoy this video, uh, I would encourage you and would really appreciate if you would uh, like and subscribe. Because I have no idea when these videos are going to come out. Um, I'm not very consistent with posting, especially when I don't have something of worth to post. And I don't want to just spam everybody's feed with weekly videos and I where I'm like I sewed a button on my costume and that's all I did this week because I have a full-time person job as a software engineer so I need to uh, focus on that as well so this is my free time stuff but yeah so please like and subscribe uh, hit the bell icon so you're notified when I do post. Um, I'm only going to be posting when I have a portion of the cosplay complete. So anyways, let's get into it. Let me change this camera angle real quick. Alright, let's talk through this. So, you can see we have this printed out piece of paper for our lovely Valkyrie. And we got our Sharpie and we got a pen. So, 
what we're going to end up doing is we're going to put the sharpie, start circling bits, and then on these little margins and potentially on the back we'll start writing uh, what we're going to make those out of and what we need to buy for it and just kind of the general plan. I feel like this is a good way of planning just because um, if you look at all of this it can be really easy to get overwhelmed. Okie dokie. So let's go ahead and start with the mask. This is obviously the most um, intricate part of this or you know the most striking part of her outfit. Get out of here. So we're on the actual table. So this part right here not including the wings, potentially including this, so I'm gonna write a question mark right there. It's a little hard to see, it's black sharpie, I apologize. But this specific mask part, um, I have a face mold of my face that I created in a tech talk uh, about two years ago. Um, so we'll recast that and then we're going to use probably like monster clay or something to sculpt this part. So right here, monster clay and sculpt. And we're also going to use pen instead so it's not bleeding through. And then I think after I get this sculpted and all beautiful, we'll mold it in resin. So that way it is like perfectly smooth because you can tell her face is just completely smooth. Then these parts, these wing bits right here, right here, we're going to make those. We'll probably flat sculpt them so the mask will end right here where it kind of curves and then this is just kind of flat and curved. We'll mold those by themselves and do the same thing here, except we'll do a flat mold instead of um, molding it on the face. Um, this little goatee part will be separate, and this part where this like dragon uh, with the wings and all of the just this decorative bit on the forehead uh, will also be molded like that. Moving on to these little button things. Just gonna number these. These buttons I'm probably going to mold in Blender and then 3D print Blender 3D. So, as a side note, I just I have uh, 11 months basically to finish this. It'll be you know submission deadline is August 31st, 2024. It is currently September 28th. So I have about 11, 11 months. I'm going to be working on this mostly on weekends. We also have the holidays coming up, so that's going to take a chunk of time. And that's why I'm starting this now. This is a whole lot of new stuff that I have not done before. <laughs> um, and for me to get extra points in the cosplay competition, it needs to have a high level of difficulty. Like I can't just 3D print everything sew everything, do the same stitch on everything. I can't do that if I want a high score there. So that's why we're doing a whole bunch of different medias with this. So anyway, mold and blender and 3D print. We may change our minds on these wing bits and uh, 3D print those as well, mold those. Um, I just, for the mask portion, I want to have the creative control to be able to you know, smooth it with my fingers, make sure it's going to fit my face, and look as close to this as possible. So, 3D print these guys, 3D print those guys, possibly 3D print this belt. I might change my mind and do a flat mold on those as well, just because there's some little intricate details here that I'm drawing over so you can see it a little better. Um, there's some intricate details there, um, so I may end up doing this either as flat mold and resin, 
or EVA foam. We'll see when we get there. Um, I might do it in a softer material just because this is around my waist and I feel like that, that would, would be a little painful um, if it isn't a soft material. Let's see, the next thing, so let's do these belt buckles here. We'll probably just 3D print those, those are pretty simple. Um, same with these little arm decorative bits. So we'll 3D print those as well. And then I know the wings are sticking out here. We'll get to that, that'll probably be the last thing. So her cowl here, this thing, um, it looks like chain mail, but it also is like really, 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 really condensed chain mail. I may play around with actually making chain mail and seeing how comfortable that is. And then the idea for attaching the mask to the cowl, I'm going to put uh, probably an EVA foam band with some strong magnets like I did for Kira's goggles and just make it magnetic so you can put it on and take it off that way. But the other thing I was thinking for this cowl bit is potentially doing knitting. I've done knitting before, so if we could find a synthetic yarn that's not super hairy, kind of like a paracord material maybe, that is metallic, is this bronzy gold metallic, then I might just knit this cowl um, since I do have enough time for that. Uh, let's see, um, let's talk about these arm wrap things. So I'll probably end up making these out of faux leather and uh, putting an inner sleeve on them and then wrapping that faux leather around so it does have this bound appearance. It's kind of hard to see in this picture just because it's printed in ink, but it's basically wound around. Then these little hip pad things, um, we'll either make them out of EVA foam or we may try to do some leather working here. I know a lot of people have problems with leather working just because it's not humane and all of that jazz, but this is like this is basically a Norse god, and I really feel like actual leather work would really match your character better than trying to substitute it for something else. And I just feel like that would make these parts more durable. Um, same thing for these legs. Um, they're wrapped as well, just like these arms are. Um, so we'll do like an inner sleeve and then uh, the outer there. Um, these moccasins, the, they're like moccasin boots here. Um, we're going to do leather working there, that is for sure, and make sure that they can either like zip or snap or something into these leggings. I just feel like to get this stitching like this, uh, we could probably use faux leather, but it might end up being too shiny. Um, these are very like worn type boots. And then there's like this little decorative bit on the end of her toes. I'll probably do that out of resin as well and just mold it on the boot and like use a Velcro or something to attach it. I am going to uh, yeah, use leather working on these boots. Let's see. Let's talk about these shoulder pads. These will probably be made out of EVA foam. Uh, that I cover in resin or they'll be 3D printed. They also still have intricate lines on them. I'm trying to avoid 3D printing as much as possible, especially on detailed pieces like this because with the Pura goggles they had a bunch of details, but I couldn't sand it that much because of the details, otherwise I would lose them. So it makes more sense to make these out of EVA foam where I can add on the detail and have it stay and be smooth and all that jazz. Okay, um, she has this weird tunic thing that like goes into the shirt. This will probably be made out of uh, soft faux leather or a linen material that could also work. What I am mainly concerned about are these stitch lines. They're like very obvious stitches. So it kind of looks like leather work, but I don't think it is. So I'll probably go for a linen type thing there. And then for these decals, I was thinking about doing embroidery because I have some really gorgeous uh, gold acrylic uh, embroidery thread so we could do that but we could also do like a vinyl decal and do like an iron-on situation 
and then maybe just sew over the edges or something like that. I could also try to paint these. I'm not really sure about those right now, but that'll be kind of an end step anyway, so we'll figure it out when we get there. Um, then she has like this little belt thing under her t tunic that uh, goes into like a loincloth, and then there's one on her hips as well. This is definitely a linen type fabric, and it kind of looks like these are painted details, so I'll either do that or embroidery. Whatever I end up doing on these, I'll end up doing on those. Let's see what else. Um, this underbelt thing uh, kind of looks like just giant shields, like more of these here. So I'll probably 3D print all of these pieces and then do some jewelry work uh, to get these to uh, combine and into a belt and I'll probably attach them to this big belt here. Um, this big belt I am going to do leather working on it, it as well just because it also has some intricate designs in here and it also looks pretty thick. And if we're 3D printing these pieces here we're going to need to make this just as thick so it can actually support those. I don't have a picture of her back but I assume that it's kind of the same situation. I'll find one eventually. And then we get to the final bit, which is these giant ass wings. So I don't want to do any robotics for these, just because that makes them extra fragile. It's not that I can't, it's that it will make them fragile and it will make them bulky on these joints because I definitely want them to open. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to do like either a PVC or a copper pipe type situation, make it jet out from the back, do some sort of harness that goes under all of this stuff. Still need to find a picture of her back to figure that out. Um, and then we'll do another one that goes up, and then another one that goes down. And then we're going to find pheasant feathers for most of this, but these giant ones, I'll probably make those out of two millimeter EVA foam. Let's see, uh, so how these will open, my idea is running cord out of the bottom of the joint when it goes up into this ankle, angle. Um, so like a paracord type situation, run it up, run it down, um, make it just loose enough for it to fold over on itself like this, and then we'll attach it somehow to either like my elbow or something. So when I open my arms, it tightens this and that'll make it open naturally. And then I don't have to worry about robotics and I can control the wings individually and make it look really cool. So that's the idea there. So that's kind of a review. One, for her mask, we are molding with monster clay, casting in resin to leather work or belt moccasins and potentially the sleeves and the leggings. We're 3D printing the uh, decorative under piece uh, and chest clasps and arm details and then uh, embroidery on the gold fabric details and then just a lot of feathers i don't really need to write that down just for me um and then knitting chain mail knitting chain mail so that's kind of the idea for sigrun the other part of this let me move you down actually so i can talk about this a little bit better so the other part of this cosplay is the fitness side of it. Valkyries are very muscular, very fit creatures. I really do appreciate how in the game they do look like real people, but I also understand that I am not to a fitness level of a Valkyrie yet. I've been on a fitness journey for about two years, and one of the things that I told my husband <laughs> Uh, when we first started was that I wanted to look like a Valkyrie. That was my fitness goal. That was my end goal, right? Um, I wanted to be muscular and I wanted to be strong and I wanted to feel powerful and also just look gorgeous because Valkyries are super gorgeous creatures, right? So Sigrun for me is going to kind of be like the victory walk for achieving that fitness goal. 
right now I do want to address that you do not have to lose weight, you do not have to gain weight, you do not have to change anything about yourself to cosplay something. You do not have to be a certain gender, a certain race, you do not have to be a certain anything to cosplay something. Um, you can buy your cosplay completely from the store, you can make every part of it, it doesn't matter. Whatever makes you feel good in cosplay, you should do it. Cosplay is an open community to everybody. But for Sigrun, for me, for my rendition of her, I am going to be changing my diet, changing my exercise routine to try and achieve the body that she has or as close as I can come to it genetically. Just wanted to get that out of the way. I'm not saying anyone else has to do any of this fitness stuff that I am doing for this cosplay, but it's something that I want to do and have been wanting to do, and I want this to kind of be a reward for finally hitting that goal. Because it's been two years. <laughs> the other part of this, now that we're through the heavy stuff, is figuring out what we need to buy. So we kind of talked about uh, what all of this will be made of. So we have monster clay, we have resin, we have uh, 3D printer filament, we have um, yarn if I can find the correct kind, we have feathers, we have uh, piping, paracord, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, let's go through that a little bit in detail. So for uh, the resin, I already have some. Um, it's smooth on resin. It's their fastest setting one. Um, it's made for like doing alginate molds, uh, which are those things that you stick your hand in and it's purple at first and then it dries and it's like gray and then you can wiggle your hand out. Um, you see them all over TikTok. Um, so that's the resin I'll be using for the mask portion. Um, for the 3D printer filament, I'll probably just use a PLA. It's the same stuff that I used on uh, my Pura goggles and like the glasses and stuff for her. Just sand the hell out of it and then attach it probably with an epoxy of some kind to the uh, mask and then sand that so it's seamless. Uh, for the leather, I'm going to be getting that from Tandy Leather, which is literally right down the street from me. Like, they have an in-person shop near me, so that makes the most sense for me. I really like seeing fabrics and everything in person rather than ordering them online. I know it's more expensive that way, but that's just what I personally prefer. The feathers, I will be ordering off of Amazon just because I'll need so many. EVA foam, I'll be getting that from Joann's. Let's see. Any of the fabric I'll be getting from Joann's. So for the wire for the chainmail, which I'll prototype and see which one I like better, whether it's the knit or the actual chainmail, I'm probably just going to use a piano wire and use a drill with a dowel and just go and make a whole bunch of little O-rings myself. For the thread, it'll be Joann's. Um, for the piping and stuff, I'll probably do Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, same with the paracord because I have a construction section. And then the inner fabric, I'm going to try to make it some sort of maybe spandex, just so hopefully it's a little bit stretchier and uh, a little bit more breathable, especially since there's going to be leather or full leather on top of it. It's going to be a hot costume, but I want to make it as comfortable as I can. For the magnets, I already have the strong magnets and I'm going to do the same situation I did with the Pure Mask where I have I had a magnet in my actual bun and one on the back of the goggles and I can just click it in. Um, so we'll do the same thing for the mask onto the cowl. Uh, the cowl also has these like little brown bits. Probably make those out of leather as well, or faux leather, whatever they decide there. And then I think that about sums it up. So there's not a whole lot of like materials that go into it. Oh, one thing that I will need is mold making silicone and I'll be getting that from Smooth On. It's expensive, that'll probably be the most expensive part of this costume, besides the leather. I think the leather will probably run us a little bit 
of money as well, um, but I want to be able to do the leather working on it. So I already have leather working tools, so I don't need to buy those. As I purchase this stuff, I'll try to save receipts, and when I do updates on whatever I've worked on, I'll try to include those in the video so you can kind of see where the price range is landing. I'm anticipating this will probably cost me about a thousand dollars to make, but we'll see. We'll try to use recycled fabric as much as possible. I'll probably go to Savers and see if they have tablecloths. My Pura cosplay was almost entirely made out of tablecloths, except for the lining on the coat and the pillowcase, which was also thrifted. The shoes were thrifted, you know, and had a lot of stuff. So. This will be my most expensive cosplay that I've ever made, that's for sure. But yeah, that's kind of the idea. So as far as getting started with building this, um, I am probably going to start with the moccasin boots, just because I want something that is relatively simple, but also a little bit challenging to kind of get that spark going. So when I make a cosplay, I need to have a quick win before I dig into the harder stuff like these wings, uh, molding the mask, that kind of stuff. So I will be doing that. And then the last thing, if I have time after I make all of this and it's perfect and it's the way that I want it to be, I may be trying to make Mimir's head out of silicone. We'll see how that goes. I've tried to make Mimir's head before and I totally messed up the mold so it just looks like dead Mimir. I'm not going to show you that. Um, unless people want to see that maybe in the next video. But yeah, we'll make him if I have time towards uh, the end of this cosplay, but that won't be for several months. So if you enjoyed this video, um, I would again encourage you to like and subscribe if any of this interests you at all. If you'd like to see how any of this turns out, I'd really love if you would like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when I do post. Right now I do have a full-time computer job. I may not be posting like weekly or anything like that, but as uh, I do complete portions of this cosplay, I will definitely be posting those. And if you are interested and would like to know about them, make sure you hit the bell icon. All right, that's my plug. I'm not very good at YouTubing. <laughs> Anyways, thank you again so much for watching. It means the world to me. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you. Bye.